Okay, so this will be talking about plants and people or plants and culture, however you want to look at it. We've talked a lot about this already um, in, in the semester, but this is just kind of, again, a reminder about how many things that we do in our lives involve plants. They are central to pretty much everything, not just as a food crop, but think of all the holidays that we use plants. Think of all of the things that we do where we give plants to people and we gift them and we garden with them and we use them literally in every aspect of, of our lives. Obviously, our crop production systems uh, evolved with, various, with our culture. They're definitely a part of our social system right now. If you look at every culture that produces crops, which is just about every culture, their production systems evolved to meet their cultural needs. It's an integral part of their social system. We act on plant, we interact with plants on very, very different levels. But if you look at the social and the psychological aspect of plants, think about how you feel when you get to take a hike and how relaxing that is. Think about the cultural aspects of religious ceremonies and celebrations that we have with each other. Um, the video here is, I'm not going to make us watch the whole video because I'll, I'll link it on Carmen, but the video here, I'll show you just a minute or so of it. The video is nothing more than a town um, who spent a lot of money, a, a, several hundred thousand dollars, to move a large tree 1,500 feet. And, and think about what it means to the town to do something like that. It's, that's a plant that could have just been cut down and we just wait another 150 years for something else to grow. But in this case, they spent the money and, and moved it. And think about what that means. Think about the stories that you hear in terms of people sitting in trees to prevent a road from being developed or something like that. Plants are, are part of our human ecology. If you look at holidays, lots and lots of holidays revolve around plants. And not just gift giving or Christmas trees or things like that. We, we give plants as to say I'm sorry. We give plants to say I love you. We give them for all kinds of different reasons. There are areas of the world that we know because of the plants that they grow. You know, maybe the plant that they grow are grapes for wine, but we know those areas because of the plants that they grow. We've talked a lot about recreational plants. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that, but all of those things also involve plants. You know, if you look at the percentage of farm income for tobacco, it's a fairly large percentage of farm income, given that the crop area is so small. Look at the earnings for, for France. It's 15.5% of their export, and it's only 4.5% of their crop earnings. I showed you a picture of the, the chocolate. No, those are the beans for, for, to make chocolate. We've talked about recreational plants. Um, certainly cannabis is becoming increasingly popular for a lot of different reasons, and not just as a recreational plant, but as a plant for fiber and a plant for roping, uh, paper, and all kinds of different things. Here's an interesting story. Um, nutmeg. We think of nutmeg as just this little spice that you basically throw a pinch in in a drink at Christmas time, and that's about it. But it's been used in Europe for over 2,000 years for a long time. Um, it was a symbol of wealth because it was really expensive. The Portuguese and the Dutch battled over these Indonesian islands where the plant grew. And in the early 1600s, they slaughtered over 10,000 Indonesians. Both the Portuguese and the Dutch slaughtered all these Indonesians over nutmeg and so they fought over control of all of these different islands and finally the english relinquished control over the islands in exchange for new amsterdam anybody know what new amsterdam is new york they gave up control of nutmeg for new york it's hard to fathom in, t in these days that we gave up control of what is now one of the world's largest cities and in in areas um for a plant so it's strange to think in that way um, the Spanish and South Americans, you know, they uh, were interested in different, uh, different types of things. We get a lot of plants from them. The article here is um, bananas and the, the challenges that we're having growing bananas right now. So I'm not going to have you read the whole article, but uh, scroll through there so that you can get an idea of some of the challenges that we're growing. Bananas are the number one fruit crop. So think about if we can't grow those. We have lots of other uses for, for plants. Again, we've, we've talked about some of those. Okay. Um, ethnobotany is kind of a new area of study. It's not just looking at the conservation of plants and habitats, which is kind of where botany and ecology would come into play, but it's looking at indigenous knowledge and traditional knowledge of how different cultures, including our own, 
looks at plants, their medicinal knowledge, the stories, the language, and the customs that they used, that they have around plants. So it's not just looking at say uh, a tribe that, that in South America that very few people have even heard of, but it's looking at how all different cultures utilize different plants and the customs around those plants. Right? Why are we doing this? Why the push for this? Because what we're recognizing is in our modern times, we've lost a lot of plants that people grew a hundred years ago that your grandparents might have known. So we're, we're pushing for these things and pushing to save some of these genetics where we might be able to utilize those in, in the future. Are there pros and cons to, to having heirloom plants? Well, of course there are. You could grow something that perhaps your grandparents grew and the diseases of today might make that plant actually very difficult to grow because your grandparents didn't have that particular disease. Powdery mildew is an excellent example of that. It didn't exist 100 years ago in this country and it does now. If we look at tulips, and I'm not going to run this whole YouTube video, um, but if we look at tulips, the latest you'll see that at one point, many, many, many ages ago, tulips were actually the foundation for the entire economic system in the Netherlands for a couple of years. And then, like all bubbles, they crashed. So that's a little three minute video on, on explaining what we now call tulip mania and how that really got started. Here's another little video. Um, again, I'm not gonna run this whole video, but um, I'll run a second of it. And this is the, this is the cool part right here with, with this particular video. I had the is, project for Notice the size of this particular tree, all right? Again, I'm not gonna run the whole video. You guys can, you guys can watch the video, they're there on YouTube. And it's really, really cool to think about these people who traveled in the middle of the mountains during the dead of winter in a snowstorm to film one of the world's largest, tallest, oldest trees and the quest to save this particular organism. So what we want to look at when it comes to our, our plants and our culture is think about what they mean to you. And there'll be a little uh, assignment on the discussion board with this because the natural world means different things to different people. Okay, as always, if you got any questions, don't hesitate to hit me up.